So, I'm with Simon, following the excellent 4-2 win we had against Gloucester. Last time we spoke, Simon, obviously, we've been on the uh, the bad run, so to speak, the blip that we'd had. We just lost against Gainsborough. Um, but it's a lot more positive now. There's a lot more positive energy going around the club, around the stadium. How are you feeling at the moment? Yeah, good. I feel good about the way things are going. Um, yeah, the last time we spoke, it was certainly a difficult patch. But I think you're going to get that sometimes with... When you assemble a squad with so many new players and new recruits in the summer, and um, preparation wasn't it was it was good during pre-season, but then we lost to likes of Woodsy and Nelly through suspension in the first uh, first three games for Woodsy, first game for Nelly, um, probably disturbed us a little bit, but we were gaining decent momentum without playing fantastically well. Uh, we had the three-point deduction, we had uh, those defeats, and that probably. Uh, well, that hurt us at the time, you know. I think we're all hurting um, because during that spell, in two or three of the games we lost, we were actually playing some good football. Um, but the response has been brilliant since. I was looking back on the defeats that we had. Uh, you've obviously had time to reflect and to to take on board what's happened. You know, what what were your thoughts about those defeats? And you know, how obviously have you sort of come out the other side? Because there was a lot of talk about. You know the negative of the club. We had the fans for, and we had all that that you know transpired. But that's passed now. Mm, well, I think it was important to get the fans in, involved in that open fans forum, and um, I said, Let, let's get the seats around us so that they can see the colour of our eyes, so they can see the passion. You know, we're we're desperate to succeed, um, and I think we're all genuine people behind the scenes, and we, we fight uh, for the same cause. You know, we we want to all. Um, have that shared goal and show, we wanted to show the supporters at that low ebb um, just how hungry we are and we were to, to uh, turn it around. Um, I think as a manager it's important when you're at a low ebb to understand you know, why, the, say, why the results aren't coming but actually not be so black and white about it and, and uh, orientate your thoughts all on, um, on the result. You know, the performances at times were decent. Colwyn Bay, anyone who went there would have seen us dominate the game entirely and I think their coaching staff uh, even admitted to the chairman and, and, and to Macker after the game that that was the case. Um, we played the way we wanted to play and you've not got a divine right on, to win the game even if you have 18 shots on target to there too. But in that situation we lost and I think it was what uh, the feeling was overall one of disappointment for the lads because they committed to the game plan and they played ever so well. Um, but if, it, if you dominate your thoughts on the end result, which ultimately we're judged on, um, there, is, there is difficulty with that. You have to look at the performance, and that's what we've tried to do recently, concentrate on our performance and how the, get, how the way that we want to play the game, uh, how we're doing with that, and hopefully then uh, the results will follow. Now, strange enough, I think we can all point to the turning point uh, for the season in that respect. It was against Boston United and it was the 46th minute of the game. We were obviously 3-0 down at half-time. Um, I know for a fact that you weren't happy and you told the squad in no certain terms at half-time. But then you made the three substitutions and it all turned. Yeah, I think it was a turning point for us. Certainly certainly looking at the, the results there. Um, it, yeah, we, we'd had those games uh, where it, it wasn't going for us. Uh, we went to Gainsborough in the first half. We let ourselves down and that's when I, I ripped into, into the squad a little bit out of time there because I thought we were we were second to balls, we, we didn't display the passion that we had done in previous weeks um, and we didn't deserve anything. We went to Boston and I had high hopes that we'd turn it around that day uh, because we've had a good history there in, in recent seasons um, but we were nowhere near at it you know, and I said to uh, Macca, my assistant, I said, well we can't defend this, you know, we can defend performance at Colwyn Bay, the Brackley game, the Stalybridge game with 2-0 up before Craig got sent off. And we can defend those performances, but this we can't. Now, we've got to hold our hands up uh, as management team uh, and say, so, tactically, we've got it wrong. We um, obviously didn't prepare the lads well enough for that game. We found ourselves 3-0 down. And on that occasion, I didn't rip into the lads at all. I just said, look, you know, we've got to change it. We've got to change it around. Obviously, it's not been good enough because... We're getting, we're getting murdered out there. There's things have to change, uh, and this is what we're going to do. We, we had a brief discussion with Macker and I before we went in at half time, and we changed the tactics, changed the personnel for that second half, and that's what was needed. And 
and uh, fortunately we've got a strong enough squad that we can utilise the whole squad uh, for any eventuality in my view and, um, and we, we were pleased that the lads responded well. Now obviously Liam popped up with the first one, Liam Hartley, and then after Dominic Rowe's um, stunning uh, 25 yard drive, mm. what were you and John thinking on the sidelines at that point in time? Were you, you know, were you thinking we can actually get something from this? Or was it a case of has it come too late? No, I thought once the second one went in, I certainly thought we're, we're back in business here. Um, I have to admit that 3 0 down after about half an hour, I was thinking get to half time quick um, <laughs> because it didn't look like we were going to get anywhere near to com coming back into the game. Um, so it was make sure we don't go under. You know, it, we, we want to create, yeah, but we've got to stand up as men and, and be counted, both Macker and I, but also the lads. And horrible place to be. A horrible place, you know, walking across that long diagonal walk to the dugout. Um, it's a lonely place to be, and you're thinking you're letting the supporters down who travel, mm. you're letting the chairman <laughs> and his family down, and um, and you're letting the fans back home down, and, and that's not what we want to do. And, um, and it was important that we showed our mettle as a team and as a squad, and I was very proud of the lads after. And it was an exhausting day, uh, but the feeling was one of a relief after. Now, obviously, the third and equalising goal came from Dale Southwell. And when we last spoke, you sort of dropped the hint that you were looking at the new strike, looking to bring someone in up front at the time, just to sort of add a bit of impetus. And then um, Dale turns up, and for a young lad, he took on an awful lot of responsibility for that final penalty. He did ever so well, yes, to, to actually grab the ball in that situation um, and take responsibility and dispatch it so coolly. Mm. It was actually uh, reminiscent of Dominic Knowles last year when we played at uh, Doncaster's ground. And he just grabbed the ball, I'm having it. And so no one was going to argue with him, I think, in that pressurised moment. Um, but credit to him. Yeah, we, we talked about uh, uh, the need at that time and maybe freshen the squad up a bit. And also just gives everyone a bit of a nudge, you know, and come on. And uh, I knew that the lads could do it. Didn't want a permanent signing in. Just wanted someone for a month that uh, might have a, might have a knee-jerk reaction as a result of that uh, new impetus. And it, it seemed to work. Uh, I'm pleased with the lads that they've taken off since. I mean, it was also lucky against Workington because that goal where it was ruled out for offside looked very, very close. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the uh, that result at Boston and then the result after the 3-0, uh, very good display, was just what the doctor ordered and gave us all a, a tonic and goals going in as well. Got the monkey off my back and, and uh, helped take the pressure off the lads and also give them a bit of confidence. I mean, obviously definitely works, like you said. Um, the monkey is gone. The 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 air of negativity seemed to lift quite quickly because we've been on a fantastic run since. It's only one defeat, obviously, in about eight or nine games now, including the West Riding Cup and um, uh, the FA Trophy. Yeah. In fact, it's two defeats. Beg your pardon, because it was the FA Trophy yeah, as well. Just, leave it on. <laughs> <laughs> just the one. Yeah. Um, but you've got to be pleased with that response. I mean, it's you know a lot of people have said um, on various other media that how will the club react to a defeat and how will the team react to that defeat. And the answer is, we win. Well, that's right. I mean, I think Solihull was a disappointing display. Anyone who went there, we, we didn't deserve anything from the game. And we came away really disappointed that... Um, I was disappointed with what I brought to it. You know, that tactically, I thought um, we didn't get the best out of the lads. And um, we didn't create, and I think we've got a creative squad. And I think we had to draw a line under the sand and go, right, that was then. What are we really about? You know, let's go rewind the clock a, a bit. And we got the videos out. We, we got the under-21 squad in, the first team squad in at the ground in the 1919 bar, and went through the Stockport 15 minutes golden spell when we scored three goals, and also the first 15 minutes against Bradford Park Avenue in the Trophy. And the difference was a massive contrast in styles of performance and the bravery on the ball. And that's been, I think, the trigger for us. You know, in the upturn in performance, we've every, every player shown bravery, confronted it, and got on the ball and played. And as a result, we played through the thirds, and we've got some very good, creative players on the ball, and it's made a big difference. I think the two results most recently that have taken people by surprise, are obviously the alternate one and Henderson Town, because to be fair, they were high-flying clubs and they were fairly much, to an extent, invincible. Or they seem to be that way. They've come to Harrogate Town, or we've gone to theirs. 
and we've grabbed two fantastic results, but we've deserved those results. I think so, yes. I think the first half an hour, especially against Altrium, uh, we played with real spark and, and energy, and um, we stuck to our philosophy that we're trying to cement you know, in, in, to, in all the club, uh, from junior system right up. And, uh, and the lads grabbed it. You know, they played at such a high tempo that I think would have given anyone a game on, the, on that day. Uh, and we scored the goals at the right times, uh, which always helps. And um, yeah, despite a more difficult second half, I still think we stuck to uh, passing it on the deck and, and being creative. So very pleased with that. And then to go to Hensford, I think, uh, yeah, I will have accept, accepted four points from the two games. Difficult away journey, they'd won six on the, on the bounce at home. Um, but again, I thought after a difficult first half, where we didn't really perform to anywhere near our maximum. Second half, we controlled it, but very quick on the counter attack. We changed it, tweaked it a little bit at half time, uh, tactically, and we wanted to shorten the pass in a bit uh, and yet have fast outlets up front. And it worked, you know, it worked. But uh, it, was the, it was the players that carried it out, and uh, they deserved all the credit. A lot of people have sort of said. Um yeah, Ocean and Hennessford, they're the big ones. But looking at the fixtures, I would have said that the Gloucester City one that we've just recently had, that was probably the potential banana skin. Because they had also got you know two fantastic results against Ocean mm -hmm. and Hennessford, funnily enough. I don't know if there's a mirror image there or something. And then they come to us full of you know confidence. And then 4-2, um, we beat them. I know, yeah. It, just as we came off the pitch, we were thinking, great result. And they'd gone and mirrored it, like you said. And it was, uh, it was always going to be a difficult game. They were flying with confidence and rising up the table as well. Um, and they're always hard working team, always difficult to play against, was quite f strong physically and a fit bunch and they'd included two lone signings, uh, one from Swindon who was banging the goals in from uh, added width so we knew it was a difficult game um, but we had to stick to our guns and concentrate on ourselves and um, I was very pleased and especially with the, the offer that we put on uh, as a club and the, the, the fans um, responding to that and turning up in the numbers. Uh, it's about time we did it in front of a, a really good home support and perform like that and show you know, the passion that we did on the day. Now I'm not going to say there's any omens here, but last time we did this offer or something very similar, we got a, a really good game against Hinkley and beat them 5-0, mm -hmm. beat Gloucester 4-2. Should we just have every game the same, everyone for a pound? We seem to get high scores. <laughs> well, you asked the board that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll have something different to say about it. Yeah, but it, obviously, it, it does it does help when you know you get do get that vocal support. And if any football in the land would say that, um, and it, it, that I think they were the real driving force, and um, they can inspire uh, players. And they are twelfth man. I've always said that it's a cliche, but it really does help and create that buzz around the stadium. I mean, what did it mean to you and John to actually sort of stand in the manager's dugout? And look brilliant. around and see other faces. Oh, it's brilliant. I, I think uh, I remember in the second year we had a, a good crowd against Alfreton and they needed uh, a win to win the championship, and, and we needed the, the uh, a result, positive result, to get the tenth game on the bounce uh, undefeated. So that night was special um, uh, for the atmosphere, and uh, I've always thought that because it's so close to the pitch that it's a fantastic ground, and uh, if we can get the numbers in a decent crowd, then it certainly make the noise that we want. It's good to see the kids as well. There seem to be an awful lot of children yeah. there, and that always brings a, a different kind of vibe, but a more yeah. a, a more bouncy kind of vibe. Yeah, I think we had a, a drum through again, and a drummer, a drummer boy who yeah. come through at Christmas, and uh, and also a guy with a, a cowbell, of all things. And it all helps generate that home support and uh, getting the lad behind the lads, and it's uh, it certainly helps. Yeah. And, uh, what I want to do now is sort of step away slightly from the games and go more to the players. Um, I know, like I said before, you're a manager, it's very much a team effort. But I'm going to sort of put you on the spot a bit now and just mention a few players. All right. um, Adam Novakovsky being one, you know, he's a, a local lad, mm. has come in for a bit of a stick you know, in past times. But especially against Henderson when you brought him on for the second half, he did seem to be the difference maker. He's winning the headers, he helped the team appear to be that inch taller. Well, that's right. I mean, the whole point in having a squad is that you can utilise them and it's important they stay motivated and, and confident in their own game that they can make an impact when they come off the bench and I think Adam's been brilliant for us you know he's a, he's a great club man he gets the nights out organised the entertainment on the coach the boom box or whatever they have there you know playing all the music but 
let's not underestimate his football ability. You know, I've played him at the back and he's been outstanding. I've played him in midfield and he's been a real line-hearted type, you know, in there and breaking up play, but also he's got better and better as the years have gone by now uh, on the, with the ball on the floor and um, he can drop his shoulder, glide past play, players and, and pick a pass. And credit to him. And against Hensford, he was, oh, he was massive for us and he changed the game. The strikers are sort of coming for a bit of um, criticism. I mean, you said yourself as well that they need to score, they need to be a bit more proactive. Uh, some of the fans, on again, various other media sort of said the same things, but they seem to be really doing you proud at the moment. I mean, Ashley's scoring, Liam's scoring, and the player that uh, most people don't know about, Michael Woods, uh, seems to be notching up one or two little goals, not very spectacular. But seems to be, you know, they seem to be banging them in for you now. I mean, it, obviously that's going to be a good sign for you. But what have you said to them? What's made them? I don't think it's anything I've said or can take credit for. I think it's just the, the honesty of the lads that perhaps that was proven a bit of an obstacle because sometimes with honesty there's a bit of anxiety. They want to make it happen so much, you know, especially being new to the club, Hawley uh, and Ashley Walsfold. They, they wanted it so much. Um, Ash got off to a great start. Hawley got off to a decent start as well. Um, as a team, maybe we didn't create enough chances, but maybe we were thinking about it too much in front of goal, and um, it knocked a few players' confidence at the time, and uh, that's what every player needs. And I, I think now they've really worked hard to get through that spell, and I always knew they were good players. You know, we wanted them on contracts because of that, and uh, we wanted to own them, and they, they, we wanted them to think that they belonged to us and they could relax and play and I always said, I remember meeting Hawley in the summer and Ash and said, look, we'll back you if you have a dry patch, we'll back you, you know, you're here, you're here for at least this season and the way they're playing, that we'll want um, them all for a very long time. I'm um, going to mention Michael again because obviously he, like he said, he was suspended at first of the season, um, came, had some games, then was out of the squad for an injury and you know, various other reasons. But he's come back, and he seems at the moment to be sort of like the, art, the archetypal type, type of different player. I mean, he's, he's running against Altrincham was just absolutely wonderful. I mean, that goal, you know, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, but the other thing he seems to be bringing to the table now a bit more is that bit of consistency. I mean, again against Gloucester, he was first rate. He, you know, he had a really good shot against Huddersfield as well that the keeper saved. I mean, what, what can you say about that? I think there were signs, real signs against Halifax. Yeah. In the West Riding County Cup, I think, uh, but I think there was more supply to him. Um, I think yeah, you mentioned that before the interview about some people had uh, questioned his commitment, and it astounds me that you know I, I can't believe it. You know, we've opened the gates for, for people who are available to come and watch us train, and you should see his passion there. Um, yeah, he gets disappointed, but he's a flair player, and flair players tend to occasionally get disappointed when they get, don't get the right kind of supply and the right amount of supply so they can strip the stuff. Um, and yeah, I've had to have a word about body language, don't be despondent when it doesn't happen for you. Uh, but we want him to get on the ball. And we want Adam Baldwin to get on the ball, Brad Abbott to get on the ball, and, and Cleveland Taylor. And kind of I, I've gone around the changing room, they're all match winners. Mm. They're all match winners. So to get them on the ball, when they're getting marked, we're going to have to be quicker, uh, quicker on the ball quicker to receive the ball, uh, play the half turn more uh, and play more ent enterprising stuff. Uh, but the minds have got to be free to be able to do that and um, we've got to be able to be prepared to make a mistake, take a risk and get those players on the ball. But um, as I say, they deserve a lot of credit because results weren't going their way um, to really grab it and to be able to take a risk in that situation um, takes a lot of courage and a lot of credit from, from my point of view looking on the pitch because there's no hiding yet, we want the results at the same time. Um, but we've had to try and concentrate on that performance and the style that we want um, in order to get our key players on the ball. And obviously Woods is one of them, uh, and Adam Boulder is uh, another one of them as well. So we've had to break it down and uh, make sure we, we get the ball down on the deck in order to get the best out of those players. I think one of the other players I want to mention is Liam Hardy. Um, now Liam's had a horrendous time for injuries, I mean we all know about the broken leg and then he had his um, police problem, I think it was, that sort of ruled him out of another season, but to come back the way he has done, you know, he's banging in goals, he looks physically a different player, but he also looks a happier player. I think he's a happier player because he's physically changed. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, 
he's, he's, he's been razor sharp since the start of the close season and that's massive credit to him he's been in the gym uh, all the time as you can see his frame's a lot bigger now it's given him that more confidence to knock people off the ball when they get tight uh, psychologically he's probably in a better place now as a result and um, scored the goals scoring goals um, one of the four or five who are banging him in at the minute and uh, it gives me a buzz that you know with loyalty works both ways and um, he could have thrown in the towel I suppose last year when I was sending him out on loan to Frickley and Harrogate Railway but no he um, he's part of us you know and uh, we wouldn't want to be without him we see his qualities on and off the pitch and he's a real character yeah well, the other thing that um, is noticeable, and again people have picked up on this, is there's a calmness now to the play, and I presume that's probably down to heads like his Adam Bowden, like you say, Cleveland Taylor, uh, Michael Worcester to a certain extent, all experienced players, um, but there seems to be a different kind of level of play that they're bringing now. We have the fast wingers, we have the strikers that can score, but we've also got the other players as well that can sort of, they can make something, they can get on the ball, they can think, hang on a minute, I can pass there, I can pass there, I can knock it there and there. Mm. That's going to be great for us as well, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, then those that you mentioned there are naturally calm, composed players. Uh, but it makes you even more confident and composed when you have more options available to you when you're about to receive the ball. So in order to do that, you have to make the pitch bigger. You, everyone has to buy into that wanting the ball. Mm. Um, and I thought at Solihull, I looked up a couple of times, and, uh, Dave Merris and, and Matt Bloomer, and they were looking up and there might have been one ball on, and it was a 50-yard diagonal to Chris Hall. And I thought, no, we're better than that. So we have to have a look at tactics. Have to, you know, we have to have a serious look at ourselves, and we have to demand that people want the ball. Uh, if, if they want the ball, they've got a great chance of being in the team um, and in the squad. And so I look at, I look at the percentage of the, the bench at the minute, I think they all are bought into it as well. Um, and it's... It's great, you know, and, and you know, we're trying to take away the blame and say, look, if, you know, if you're getting it back there from the keeper, if you give it away, it's our, our fault because we're telling you to. We're not just saying, right, squeeze up to the halfway line, smash it in the channel, we'll play through corners. You know, we're trying to develop play because of the creative talents we've got, and we have to stick to that. We can't be inconsistent with it, uh, maybe because one of the younger managers in the game, you know, I've been a bit impetuous before. And, said no that's not working change that and uh, um, because I want to win you know I want to go places I want to do things in the game and I've been I have been impetuous and I've had to learn I've had to reflect I've had to log everything down and think no you changed it too quickly I changed it too quickly after the Barrow defeat two days after we beat Ferriby playing 4-2-3-1 we beat them 5-0 we lost 1-0 on a bobbler pitch players didn't want the ball as much uh, and instead of encouraging them to go back again to do that, we changed the football team. And I made that mistake, and, um, but we're trying to reflect and get better. I want to mention Craig McLivery as well in goal. I mean, he's having another fine season at the moment. Mm -hmm. Some of the saves, I think the other ones against Worcester, um, and a couple against uh, Emerswood as well. Absolutely out of his world. Oh, I think he's been top notch. He can do what he wants. Uh, in terms of how high he reaches in the game, I think uh, he can be very, very successful in the professional ranks. Um, no one else is listening to this, yet, you know. <laughs> I hope, <laughs> but uh, in the professional game, but uh, we don't want to lose him. But I think it's probably inevitable at some point. Um, he's such an athlete; he's a very good keeper and a great lad. So yeah, we'd wish him well if that occasion happened. Uh, but we're trying to look after him. So um, you know, he finds it hard to to, to go. Uh, uh, but I, I think. In big moments this season, he's been there for us and pulled off a, an unbelievable save or come out for the catch. And uh, He's maturing all the time, he's getting louder um, and he'll only get better in my view because of his age and his hunger. The pitch, the fabled pitch, I mean this season it's been a, it's been a different class for us, hasn't it? I mean that season, we know all the documented problems, we all were there, we've seen it, but this year, I mean Jim and the guys that have done it obviously at the beginning, um, it's, they've been brilliant. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, the guys have been brilliant. They've been on it all the time, and they deserve a lot of credit because they were taking a whacking from all areas. I think last year, and it wasn't their fault. You know, it was the fault of the weather. Um, that didn't help, and the timing of uh, we didn't know the weather forecast was going to be so horrendous. Uh, at that time, we were changing it around, and uh, it's all in the end goal that we want to achieve. You know, that was a big part of the, of the plan: getting the pitch level and, and a good playing field. 
so we can play some good football on it. And it gives us a chance. It also gives away teams a chance because they're turning up now and thinking, "Crack, I don't want to play on that." They're thinking, "Yeah, you know, we, we've got the uh, capabilities of knocking it about and trusting it." Um, but it, hopefully, it sums up what we're about. You know that okay, it, not everything goes to plan all the time. You've got to be prepared to lose. You've got to be prepared to take the stick when the pitch isn't right. Um, but we have to be relentless in our pursuit of where we want to be. Um, and that hopefully sums us, us up that, yeah, we take the stick at the time last year, but we know it's going to be good. You know, we take the stick when we lose at Colwyn Bain if it could, but we have a belief that it'll be good. And um, we've got to have that relentless pursuit and continue that until we, we crack it. I think one of the things that's helping as well is that you guys can actually now train on the pitch as well as play matches on it. I mean, that's always been a big, uh, big, big no-no in some respects when I get town. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've cancelled a couple of training sessions because the weather's been so bad that we don't want to mess up the pitch, which would mess up the way we tried to play. But um, I think we've missed two training sessions this year. We train every other Tuesday, every Tuesday, Thursday. So it's not many, you know, and I think the pitch is so firm that the draining system is working so well that it's enabled us to get, get the goals out, play uh, and train with regularity that in seasons gone by we haven't been able to. And helps. I think that helps with consistency. It helps with their mindset. Yeah, we're training. We're in training tonight. We're in on Thursday, and so yeah, it does help the big picture. This sort of, sort of leads me on nicely to one of the, the other questions. Um, historically, at Harrogate Town, every time it gets to Christmas, everyone starts to bite the nails because we've always had this slump in form. We've always had the you know the problems to winning the matches afterwards. We've usually gone on these lovely runs beforehand, uh, and then afterwards, after the uh, the big guy in the red suit's been, it just goes downhill. Mm -hmm. But this year. And um, for what we've seen from other seasons as well, you know, the last couple especially, it's a lot more geared up now for the Christmas. You know, the Christmas period. It's a lot, a lot of people sort of say that is the area which sort of defines the season. And at the moment, you know, town are looking at they can continue this form. I mean, yeah. why is Christmas so important for the game? You know, why is it at that? Area, why is it that period? Why does anyone see it or see it with dread sometimes? Um, I don't know why they see it with dread. You know, I, I, as a player and. and uh, Coming into management now, I think I, I always look forward to the Boxing Day, New Year's Day games. You know, because if you make a sacrifice on anything, you think, right, roll your sleeves up and and, and enjoy it. Uh, everyone wants to be um, on, in the outside, you know, on uh, on Boxing Day. I think because you're all being cooped up, and, and let's get out there, get some fresh air. And I've always loved playing and being part of football games on Boxing Day. Unfortunately, they've been called off a few times in the last few years. Uh, but hopefully, the way the, way the weather's been shaping up will be okay this year. Juicy encounters to look forward to against guys who they're on brilliant form. Uh, they've got some great players, so hopefully there'll be big crowds. But um, I don't, I wouldn't, never look look forward to it. You know, with, in terms of with, with dread anyway, with trepidation. I think we we've, we've got to look forward to every game. We're playing with decent confidence, uh, on a decent run. Fans are behind us. Uh, changing room spirit is good. And you, yeah, we want to keep the run going, but we're going to have to work really hard. It's some good teams that we're up against. Which matches, particularly this second half of the season, are you looking forward to? Um, the immediate games against Geyser. Uh, they say with some good pals there, and uh, you know, like I said, Dave Marys will have good pals as well. And so, yeah, there's a lot in, in common. Uh, we, we both probably started a little bit slowly this season, so they're, they're big games, but. I don't think you can think, well, it, it defines our season, those games, because we've already been there, you know, in terms of, we've, we've slipped up and come back, you know, and we don't think in terms of why we might slip up again, but we have to have that fortitude to bounce back, uh, no matter what the results will be over Christmas and New Year, we've got to go, we've got to go again. If we win, brilliant, then we can keep the run going, but we've got to make sure there's a consistent message to the players, we've got to make sure consistent performance, consistent game plan, so that everyone knows where we are, you know, and we don't just think, oh, right, that's it, that's the season finished, uh, and we don't think we made it if we win, you know, we just have to keep going, keep the hammer down. Uh, in terms of the other games, to look forward to, I don't know, I just tend to wake up on a Friday and think, well, there's only one day left to Saturday, I love, I love match day, and whether it's Saturday, Tuesday, every game's massive for us, and um, uh, and a chance for us to show what we're about. We're in a league at the moment where it's remarkably tight. I mean, other seasons we've had the Chesters, we've had the Halifaxes, we've had teams that basically just walked away with the league. But this time, I think there's only now four points between us 
and top spot, and there's only one uh, point between us and uh, third place, I think. Yeah. Um, is that the kind of season that you want to be involved in? Is, is it more fun for you as a manager thinking, it's so wide open, or are you sort of thinking, it's actually nice to have a pace setter because you can get them out of the way and then you have not worry about the other players? No, not at all. I hate pace setters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, want, uh, I want us to be in the mix. I want us to be in the mix. And, you know, I think we're, we're proving ourselves right and, you know, in terms of the selection of the squad. We, you know, we, we were confident and we showed patience. There's been no circular going out from me. I'm making players available at all because even in the difficult patch, you know, it was up to us to turn it around, both tactically and, and giving the lads confidence. And the lads have managed to turn it around and we're in the mix at the minute and we want that to continue right through to the end of the season. And I think there's a lot to look forward to. I think um, probably the managers of the top 10 and 11 clubs will also think the same. It makes it a lot more interesting when um, it's a tighter league. Now I'm going to mention the West Riding County Cup. No sharp intake of breath, that's good. <laughs> Doing really well in it this season. Um, I know sometimes it's a competition that clubs will look at it and think, oh, blimey, I could really do about these kind of games. How are you viewing the cup now? Well, I think we have to take it more seriously now. We're in the semi-final, <laughs> one game away from Valley Parade, and that'd be a great day out for us and the supporters. But it t took on more importance um, when we were out the trophy. Yeah. You know, it obviously it goes league, FA Cup. Um, the FA Trophy and the West Riding County Cup um, and that's no disrespect to that but you know, I think the supporters would agree that you know, if you could go as far as the, in the FA Cup as possible they'd choose that or the trophy ahead of it um, but because we didn't get the results that we all wanted in those two cup com other cup competitions it took on more relevance and importance that we had a run and, uh, and we have had a run and we want that to continue and want to get to the final and uh, want to win it now no doubt about it um, you've structure. Now, last time we spoke, you've been to quite a few of the matches, and since then, I mean, like the under 21s, under nine, well, all of them basically all kicking on. The academy have had some good results as well. I mean, as a whole, that has got to be very pleasing for you to see the youngsters performing as well as they are doing. It's got to be very positive for you and the club as a whole. Yeah, I think that was the high point for the season as well when when we beat Halifax in the youth in the ever youth cup on our pitch. I thought the football on display was great from both sides and. Uh, and we came out the winners on the night, but uh, we're looking at performance more than than the results in the youth uh, as we develop the youth lads. And uh, there are a few examples now as uh, as uh, giving lads the chance to train with the first team, involved with the first team squad, and uh, soak in that kind of atmosphere in the changing room. And uh, they can see the players that they might hopefully aspire to be or look up to, uh, and see what makes them tick, and, and see the stamp and the tempo in training. So. It's going well. It's going well, and it, it's it's hard. You know, it's hard being a youth coach um, because you know we we put pressure on on those coaches as well because we want them to succeed. We want talent uh, to be a stream of talented players that uh, continue up the pathway into the first team, and um, and so far so good. You know, I think it's attitude as much as talent that we're, that we're looking for. Um, but the likes of Luke Gregg, George Eustace, you know. Uh, have trained with the f first team and have, have stood up to it well and that's uh, as much about the character as I say as talent. Obviously we're coming up to Christmas now so I will ask you the traditional and um, probably often asked question but what would you like from Santa Claus? Well, uh, nine points and three Christmas games please. <laughs> <laughs> Guys at Church Wise and, and Vauxhall uh, um, I, I just want to continue in the same vein of Positivity, you know, in and amongst the squad, we want them to enjoy the Christmas, you know, with the families and, and come out firing. Um, want to play with, want lads to play with the smiles on their faces. Want them to drive in and think, yeah, we're playing for a decent club, good setup. Uh, we know what they want from us, and uh, we've got the mix. We want them to think that, yeah, I want to play for him in midfield. I want to play for him at the back, and I want to see the end game. Want him, want us to win not just for ourselves but for our teammates and I think that that's what I want I just want that to keep evolving Brilliant. I think that's probably about as much as I can ask you at the moment Simon we've covered a lot of things uh, I mean it's very good to see the the club seems to be in a more positive state now I mean obviously when we last spoke like I said you know we've, we've had the blips um, but you seem to be the kind of person you know always positive always looking for the positive side 
and that's obviously rubbing up on the you know the team and the the club as a whole. So yeah, I, I hope so. I hope so. I think uh, you can't end up being a winner if you don't lose some times and grow from that. And uh, you look at examples right right through the levels in all walks of life and sports, and, and you have to be prepared to lose. You have to be prepared to risk it sometimes, and you have to take the hurt. You have to take the anguish. You have to take the anxiety. You have to take the nights when you're waking up. Not for your baby daughter, but for actually for worry. And you have to worry it through. And um, we certainly haven't cracked it. We're on a decent run at the minute, and we're not getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, and sometimes there will be pain ahead, and um, and that upset of losing. That's part and parcel of the game, um, and it's part and parcel of our growth. And hope that you, you get judged for the here and now. You know, I'd hate to be judged on my first year because I'm a different guy to them. You know, and uh, and I look back now and I think, oh, what was I right in there when I logged that down and what was I doing tactically and um, and equally in three or four years' time when I'm 38, you know, hopefully I look back to this point and think, you know, what was I doing? You know, hopefully I'll evolved again and and it's the same with the club. We want to keep improving, keep it, uh, you know, uh, being judged for the here and now, you know, and ultimately when, when we next lose a game, excuse. May hopefully won't happen, but you know, if it does, and it, it, it does in football, uh, I understand that you do get judged. So you take the rough with the smooth, and but it's important that we stay balanced, reflect well, and and grow in each uh, in each stage of the journey. If you could name just one area, one area that you say that you've learnt the most in about management, what would it be? Um, it's been consistent with the message, not jumping in. Two foot tackle, like I did on the pitch sometimes. Um, <laughs> reflecting properly it, it enables you to do that, I think. You know, I think um, you can be emotional because you want it that much. And you think, no, I want to get Harrington Town up, I want, I want us to be language, you know. I want. But sometimes that can hurt you uh, by too many in and outs in, in the squad. Not a subtle ship, not a subtle game plan. And I think that's, that's been an important learning curve. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Simon. Thank you.